and welcome back to our kitchen. Today you're actually going to be joining us for our dinner, but I'm making one of the best but easiest recipes you can do. It's a really simple meatloaf. You can make whatever kind of meatloaf you want as long as you know your base ingredients and your proportions. But the first thing that you're going to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. This is going to take about 45 minutes to cook all together, but it should only take 5-10 minutes to prep. We're also going to be making this with some awesome garlic mashed potatoes. Um, as always, we're doing everything as basic as we can. I try to use all ingredients that are things that you can use if you were living off of your land and living self-sufficiently, and we're going to do everything from scratch. So the first thing that you need to get is to gather all of your ingredients. This is a bacon and crust and meatloaf, so get whatever kind of bacon you want, or if you uh, do your own slaughter, make whatever kind of bacon you want for it. Uh, you're going to want two eggs, one and a half pounds of ground meat, your choice. You can do beef, veal, chicken, whatever you want to do, whatever your choice is. Um, you're going to want about one cup altogether of vegetables, depending on what you want. Um, or what you like, which preference is. Garlic, herbs, you're going to want some salt, pepper, um, I like to add cheese to it. Cheese is totally optional, but I love adding cheese to my, uh, meatloaves. And then you're also going to want some sort of bonder. I prefer to use breadcrumbs. Uh, if you don't have access to buy breadcrumbs, what you can do is you can take an awesome multigrain bread or something to that effect, toast it nice and dark, take, um one of your serrated bread knives and just sit there and kind of scrape at it over and over again and make breadcrumbs for you. You can make croutons, you can use potato flakes, crackers, oats, whatever you want to do, just something that has a uh, bread and sticking consistency when it gets wet. So those are your basic ingredients and the first thing that we're going to do is, as I've already done, is get our meat in a pan, our ground meat, I'm going to roll up my sleeves here. And we're pretty much just going to combine all of our ingredients into here together. The first thing that I'm going to add is my two eggs. And my breadcrumbs. Having eggs, breadcrumbs, salt, and pepper are the only ingredients you really have to have for any meatloaf. It's just going to kind of be a bland meatloaf that way. And then everything else is completely up to you as long as you have the right proportions of it just so that you don't get too much flavor one thing unless that's what you like. But uh, now that I've had my breadcrumbs and my eggs, first thing I'm going to do is just kind of stick my fork in there and break the yolks of my eggs up because it just obviously makes it a little bit easier when it comes time to mix everything together. Alright, and then I'm going to add cheese. I love cheese. I do about a half to a cup of cheese, depending on how much you like. I uh, pre-shredded this. I'm using a mixture of pepper jack and parmesan. It's totally up to you what kind of cheese you want, whatever your flavor is. I have actually used uh, smoked gouda in the past, and it was awesome. But So I like a lot of cheese, so I'm going to add a ton of cheese. Then I have, I'm gonna, actually, I lied. I'm going to wait to add my vegetables because I know my husband isn't going to want the vegetables in his meatloaf. So I'm going to take part of it and stick it aside that has no vegetables in it and then make the rest with the vegetables. Because I am going to add a combination of all my seasoning. What I have is about two, two tablespoons of herbs. Totally up to you what you want to use. I love using basil and oregano. They're both really healthy for you and both really good flavors for it. Then I have about a minced, one garlic clove minced up. I use extra, extra garlic because I love garlic just like my cheese. Then I have one and a half teaspoons of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that across so it doesn't get clumped all up in one area. And uh, I have garlic that I buy it by bulk and cloves and mince it up and then add oil to it to uh, keep it for long storage. And it tends to clump, so just make sure that your garlic kind of spreads out. You don't want those big clumps. You get a big bite of garlic when you're eating it. And now that I've added all that, I'm just going to use my hands. If you prefer, you can use forks. I find it easiest to use your hands and just mix the whole thing together. 
And again, you can alter, you know, if you're a person who loves salt, add more salt. If you're a person who loves pepper, add more pepper. It's up to you. Those are just kind of, it's mainly the eggs, your bondage, which I'm using breadcrumbs in your meat that you want to pay attention to. And then if you don't have a preference on salt or pepper, definitely just use those proportions because they work really well for a moderate taste. And as I do meat, if you can try to see it, I try to press it down and out and then fold it over because a lot of times you'll think you're all mixed and then you rip part of the meat open and there's a huge chunk that has all seasoning or has no seasoning at all in it. See like that, see there's a ton stuck to the bottom but not to the rest of it. mostly mixed. I'm going to take a decent sized portion of it. Again for my husband. Grab my pan over here. You can use whatever pan you, size you want because if you want a flatter meatloaf or a rounder meatloaf it's totally up to you. Just watch your cooking times based on how thick your meat is. I'm just going to round that out on this side of the pan. And just hopefully try to remember which side of the pan I did this on for his side. this back up to the side and turn my bowl back over. And now I've got, since I'm using a lot less meat, I'm only going to use part of my vegetables. And normally you would use one cup of minced or chopped or shredded vegetables, depending on what you're using, for that one and a half pounds of meat. But I'm only going to use like a half a cup because I don't like it that much either, frankly. And I'm using less meat. I'm just going to add a little bit of onion and carrot is what I'm using because I like the carrot because it gives it a little bit of sweetness and onion is just, I mean onion's a good flavor. I don't like the consistency of onion so I tend to chop it really small but, and then with shredded carrot you just got to be careful and really make, make sure it mixes in because it does like to find spots in the meat and clump together. sure it's an even thickness across your pan or whatever your mold you're doing so that the meat cooks evenly and your edges aren't overcooking with where your center cooks or anything to that effect. Just like with anything else you're making. somebody at your table who doesn't like meatloaf as much you can put it on a burger and make it like it's a bacon cheeseburger add a little cheese stuff because the bacon's on top and you would think you weren't getting the flavor of the bacon all through it but the truth is when you make it like this when it's cooking that flavor of the bacon especially if you get a nice smoky bacon soaks right down through all the meat and you kind of get that you don't have to do with the crunchiness of bacon bits but you get that nice flavor of the bacon through the whole meat so you're just simply 
laying your bacon out across the top of this. And um, for those of you who aren't living self-sufficiently, a great thing you can do, which is one of my favorite things to do when we can do it to put on top, is you can make a glaze that you're going to do relatively, depending on your taste preference, equal parts of um, barbecue sauce and ketchup. And then add brown sugar to it and stir it all up into a nice thin glaze. And then take that with a brush and lay it right over the top of this about halfway through its cooking. And it is amazing. But this channel is about self-sufficiency, so we're not going to do that. Because if you were living off your land, you would be making your own barbecue sauces and ketchups. And it probably wouldn't be the same. But if you could do it, that's awesome. Actually, I want to learn how to do that. Make my own barbecue sauce. up here. Alright, and that's all you gotta do. So it's all in over. All I'm going to do is pop that in the oven for relatively half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on the quality of your oven, whether it's a full conventional or not. Definitely make sure to check on it a lot, though, because you don't want your bacon to burn to all hell if you leave it in too long. I mean, it's red meat, so if it's not all the way through, it will be okay. and It will continue to cook when you pull it all out of the oven from the uh, heat sitting in there. So, yeah, just keep an eye on your bacon, and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Our meatloaf is done. Definitely should have grabbed two handholds so I could have showed you better. That was stupid. Um, my bacon shriveled a little more than I wanted to, but it still looks super good. It looks moist. You got your cheese all through there, your bacon. It's going to taste awesome. It's getting hot. So <laughs> I am excited. But So good luck with your meatloaf. Add all the kinds of things you want. Raisins, walnuts, cheese, bacon, peppers zucchini, carrots, whatever you want to do, and enjoy your meatloaf, have fun with it, it's really easy to make, and just remember your basics, so.